Welcome to Cooking the Books, the food and hospitality podcast discussing all aspects of the industry. We interview chefs, butchers, brewers, winemakers, restaurateurs, restaurant managers, and we talk about how they got to this point, through the good times and the bad, and what they've got planned for the future. This is Cooking the Books. This week on the podcast, we had Ivy and Adrian from the Good Sea Kefir. We discussed gut health, the importance of gut health, and how kefir can play a great role in your gut health. We also talked about the joys of running a small business, mentorship, and also a great startup food program ran here in Melbourne. This week, the podcast is brought to you by City Larder, the charcuterie specialist, specialising in terrines, pâtés and rillettes for the retail and food service market here in Australia. City Lada just received two gold medals for the free range chicken leek and truffle terrine and also the free range chicken liver pate. The only charcuterie company to receive uh, gold medals for terrines, pates, or riets this year in the Australian Food Awards. Now, over to the show. Okay, thank you very much for coming all the way from Mornington to do this. I really appreciate your time. Um, do you want to take two minutes, introduce yourselves, and tell us a little bit about your business and what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Ivy. And, and I'm Adrian. So we call ourselves the Gut Flora Warriors. Uh, we're from a company called the Good Seed Kefir. Uh, what we do is we ferment water kefir. Um, and what water kefir essentially is, it's a probiotic beverage. It's a fermented beverage. Um, we naturally ferment it. Um, and obviously, it's all about replenishing your microbiome and increasing your health as well. So health and vitality, um, all about that. Um, yeah, we have seven different flavors. Um, that would be beetroot and orange, strawberry and lime, coconut water, chrysanthemum, blueberry, lemon, and ginger. Beautiful. I love all of them. The chrysanthemum is, I, lo- I would never really picked it to be honest, but I lo- it's probably, I think it's probably my favourite to be yep. totally honest. And Beck loves it. The yeah, I think Beck loves that and yeah. the strawberry as well. So we bought some for you guys today. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. All good. Um, and you do, you do well, we call them lollies, but um, icy, icy poles. Yeah, yep. icy poles. Um, so we call them icy poles or ice pops. Yeah, okay. Um, initially they were called, what were they called? Uh, oh, gosh. Um, in Australia or yeah, just in well, general? We're, in general. We had it as a little um, ice, ice blocks type thing. Ice blocks, yeah, something. But we call yeah. them yeah, ice lollies, ice, ice lollies, pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what that is, it, it, um, it's our water kefir or byproduct of our water kefir. Um, and then we freeze it with fruits. Oh, is that what it's just? It's a, so it's a by, it's almost a byproduct. Yeah, yeah that's um, awesome. It's, it's less sweet because we actually ferment it through, and that way you don't get you know too much sugar. Um, yeah. you, you don't get much sugar. It's all natural fruits, and you get the fiber from fruits because it's blended in. Um, yeah. and kids love them. They don't even know they're having probiotics. So, yeah, I lo- yeah, yeah, yeah. I love. I smash them. I swear, <laughs> I love them. Um, it's funny what you say there about the. The sugar, you actually do put sugar in, right? Yeah. But the the grains turn the sh- take away the sugar. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. Is it exactly that? Mm-hmm. What it eats, it eats it and then turns it into a into bacteria. Something is that right? Yeah. So what it is is uh, water kefir, or like any ferment, they need a medium to feed off. Water kefir, they feed off the grains itself. It's a symbiotic culture. Uh, similar to what people will call kombucha's mother, this is water kefir's mother. So um, it's a scoby. The scoby needs to be fed sugar. A scoby is a symbiotic culture, um, yeah, okay. or they call it kefir grains. Yeah, um, okay. There's a little bit of notion between grains and oh, is it actually a gluten grain or a non-wheat grain? So this is a non-wheat grain. They call it water kefir crystals. Right. Okay. Um, these guys love eating sugar. Um, and what they do is they eat up sugar and they produce the byproduct, which is the probiotics for it, um, a little bit of enzymes, um, but essentially we're kind of having their waste. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so so, yeah. it, it, so that eats it and then turns that into, into bacteria, is that, is that yep. right? It, it's a yep. bacteria. Yeah, good, good bacteria. Into good bacteria, yeah. Um, and those bacteria are very very beneficial for human beings. Um, there is a, well, as a human, there's, as we are made with very diverse concentrate of bacteria or um, yeah, diverse amount of bacteria. And what it is, is um, it just helps replenish that. 
And nowadays with a lot of processed foods, um, stress, waterways, antibiotics, that all gets destroyed. Yeah. But it's all about replenishing the good guys because then it's a, you're able to, you know, fight off and be at your best. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I heard about, like they say about the food that we are taking in now, it's so clean and all the rest of it that we are, like you, you are losing all them, bio, uh, you know, them, them, them good bacteria in your stomach. So effectively you're cleaning yourself from the inside out, which is causing real damage, you know, that's what they're saying. And they reckon, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, well, you probably are, but there's a there's a, over a trillion different bacteria in your stomach. Do you know, that's unbelievable. And that's more bacteria, that's more humans that have ever lived on the planet, ever. Is it in your in one person's stomach? That's just I can't. That blows it's, my mind. It's crazy. Like the stats behind it, or the studies that have gone behind it. It's like what was it? The bacteria cells that we have in our stomach is the same amount as brain cells in a cat's brain. So yeah. that's why they call it the second gut or the second brain because hey, effectively it kind of controls your brain, your yeah. second gut. So and yeah. also I don't know if you're aware as well that there's this um, it's a two way your yeah. stomach yeah and it's ninety it's ninety percent up and ten percent down. Did you that, that now that again is phenomenal. It's actually. crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you, your brain only tells your stomach 10% and your stomach tells your brain 90%. So that's yeah. unbelievable. And there's more nerve endings than, than in the spinal column. Yeah, and also 70% of your immune system is dependent on your gut. So yeah. if you break it down, it's kind of like a, a car. Huh? Yeah. Um, where, you know, a car, if without your fuel tank and without the, the whole combustion system, your engine will not work. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's important to feed yourself clean, to, to feed right, to fuel your... Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work, yeah. really. It's not going to work. You can be driving the best car in the world and not feeling yeah, right. No and fuel. it's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Two stroke on a Ferrari, great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, or if you're feeding yourself with like all the wrong things, like for example, a lot of sugar and stuff like that, that means that you're actually feeding a lot of the bad guys in the gut. So that's something that you... So you're promoting the bad guys? Instead of the good guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to overrun the good guys eventually, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 so, it's so interesting. Like, and I, to be honest, I find it an easy, an easy way to look after yourself. I know that sounds like it's a bit of a cop-out, you know. It's a lot easier than going to the gym. Yeah. It's a lot easier than going for a run. It's a lot... E do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is either, you know, drink this or eat whatever it might be. What other things would you... What other things come with that? Like, I know... Uh, um, Care, the, the South Korean, what's it? Kim kimchi. Kimchi, yeah. yeah. So it, it's basically what's fermented, right? Is yeah. that the goal? Yeah. That's so, a... yeah. So kimchi is also really good for you, isn't it? That's yes. it. Like all these kind of bacteria are so good. It's fascinating. I think it's very important to have stuff that is fermented that is non-pasteurized because the moment it's pasteurized, then you're killing everything that's in it. And when you find stuff that is pasteurized or non-refrigerated, this means that the culture or the food that you're eating is already um, no longer living and that's why it's got a longer shelf life and so it, so it has so if it's fermented mm -hmm. and then pasteurized does, does that happen is, is do, do people sell that do they yeah yes, they, they, do. they do yeah right okay so you think you're buying um something that's fermented that's good for you but it's actually been through a, a pasteurization process which is taken up to a temperature for a certain amount of time then bringing it down to give it extra yeah. shelf life right? and then yes. that actually kills the bacteria because yeah. as a process you so know, it's pointless it's, right yeah yeah. And well, you, you get you get to taste it, um, but aside from that, really, in terms of health benefits, not so much. Probably a little yeah. bit of fiber if you're having something like a pasteurized sauerkraut. Um, but yeah, yeah. that's really it. You don't really. And have how the would you? How would you? How would you know if it's been pasteurized? Is it's it, it's on got the long, Oh, it's got on. It's got on usually the label. it's on the label that's I bet I've been buying this. I bet yeah. I'm going to go and check. <laughs> I'm going to be so embarrassed. I swear to God. Or the other thing is when you see it on the shelf itself, um, it's non-refrigerated to start with. And also... Um, oh, so if it isn't in the fridge, then we've got a problem. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yes, it is right. something to, to be aware of. Yeah, and okay. also maybe on the ingredients, if it says vinegar, it means that not only is it not properly fermented true, it was there was a shortcut taken. So what they did is instead of fermenting it, they just chucked in vinegar to give it the acidity to to, to preserve it. Yeah, and okay. then that's it. Yeah. Where in, in natural in, naturally the, the salts will prevent the bad bacteria and then the fermentation will keep the good bacteria and that's how you can and that's it works, right, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah, then yeah. during the fermentation process you get the acidity that comes through the taste but like adrian said you know it's the whole shortcut nowadays but yeah. it's cost isn't it time and yeah. you know businesses and people are jumping on that they're going okay we know people are looking after the gut how do we jump on that 
and make a profit and make you know yeah. and they don't really yeah. care let's be you know that's the reality and then shelf life um, it's also important as well so if you if you have a fermented food and you can't find refrigeration space for it people are not going to buy it or the supermarkets are not going to take it in because they don't have enough um, real estate on the on the refrigeration space oh, for it because of milk and cheese yeah. mm. and on all the other products yeah. yeah yeah so they still get to put it on the shelf and we sell whatever it might be kimchi yep. but it's not really that's the one the yeah. twats yep. aren't they the total <laughs> twats they'll just they'll, they'll have your eyes out they really will so we, we've established what kefir is it's a grain mm-hmm. and is it gluten like you say is it, so if you're gluten free can you have that yeah, so it's it's called a grain, but it's also called uh, tibiscus. It's called Japanese water crystals. It's called many different things, different parts of the world. Yeah, and obviously, being an ancient drink, it exists different parts of the world as well. You know, they some people also call it tapache, um, but essentially, what it is is it's started off from these crystal-like things. So. They look like jelly crystals, um, and these jelly crystals eat up sugar, yeah. um, or you know any form of sugar really. Um, and what it is is during the fermentation process that gets eaten away, and then the byproduct obviously is water kefir. Um, when we say it's grain, it's not actually a wheat grain or a plant grain. It's called a grain because I guess it's kind of like a whole thing where it's a start, it's a seed, yeah, um, but essentially what it really is is it's a symbiotic culture um so this can only be created in a natural environment it can't be made in a lab synthetically um so yeah it's just so who makes it in terms of the grain yeah the grain yeah yeah. well it was collected and passed down yeah, it's it's that special. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, it's believed that in very clean parts of the world, in the right environment, you can find it. Uh, for example, we've been told that you can find it on top of like cactus pads. Oh, um, shit, really? the right, right environment. Um, like moisture, yeah. the whole thing, air, probably airflow. The yeah, whole thing, riverbed, you know, yeah, near yeah. a tree somewhere. But this is old school so it's been passed down from generations to generations so now where do you get your like your, not your supplier but where is it is there someone that holds tons of it or how does it you know is that what is well that? they keep growing oh so, yeah so people go out and forage it no mm. they they grow it while eating sugar so oh. we started off with a, a little handful, a little quarter cup. Yeah. And now we've got uh, a decent amount to ferment <laughs> yeah, a bit more. Bit. Yeah. And oh, then... so it multiplies. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So okay. If... So you need a, you buy you know like two hundred grams, three hundred grams, whatever you know, whatever it might yep. be, and then you feed it, and then it multiplies. And then yeah. at some point in time, you have too much, and then you'll be like, oh, okay, I need to. Do you sell it? Uh, you can sell it, or you can pass it on to your friends. You can pass it on to people that you think will enjoy it. Yeah. Um, there are some people who feed it to their pets because um, pets do enjoy it. They do like it. Far out. Um, yeah, and and you, I've seen it. You can dry. Do you, can you dry it out? I've, I've seen it where you've got to rehydrate them. Yeah, so you can dehydrate them yeah. or kind of freeze dry them. And they're still alive. Yeah, they're still alive, but they take a while to come back alive. So yeah. what we do is we just keep feeding them. Hmm. It's seriously, it's it's like having another pet or k- yeah, kids because yeah, yeah. when we go away on holiday or whatever it you is, you need like, someone to go in. Yeah, someone looks after them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, they're constantly fed. They're like it's a joke. Like we we call them our kids. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Just, like, just a few billion of them. That's yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, it really. Yeah. 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 Far out. So we, we, when we go for holidays, uh, for an extended holiday, we do definitely need to organize for someone to come in and consistently feed them oh man yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a bit of a, a sing a, to them on the side <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a bit of a of a routine that you need to to come up with yeah yeah man that's that's really that's so interesting again it's like bread and that isn't it you know yeah, it's like sourdough, sourdough, like sourdough yeah. and you know and all that all like how you have sourdough yeah. hotels in europe as well yeah well <laughs> yeah the, uh, <laughs> the um, what, where you can put them in? You yeah, in, 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 hot, um, in, in airport. So Frankfurt what, Airport, wasn't Frank- it? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. So if you're I was going like, I, I was like, let me, hang on a minute. Am I? <laughs> I'm thinking. I was thinking. I was trying to put it all together real quick. Like, is that like a chain of hotels that I don't know about? I'm like, does this in Europe? I'm like, well, I'm from Europe, so I must know about. Then I was like, does he mean like like dog where you put your dog like a kennel? Yeah, that is what you mean. Yeah. Far out. But those that are really, those um, bakers that are really um, protective of their own sourdough starter, they would probably not be comfortable with doing yeah, that yeah, because yeah. 
<laughs> that would mean that so, your your starter is being placed in the care of someone else who could potentially swap it and you might not really know yeah, but yeah, yeah. They, they do have it in, in Germany oh, yeah. that's amazing yeah. so you leave it and then you go on your trip and you come back <laughs> and, uh, and this is not my child <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. your bread's all funny shaped yeah. and not crusty and you're like what's going on yeah um, yeah, that's that's. You did not feed my sourdough right. I can tell it's not happy. <laughs> oh, gosh. But so, so what are the health benefits of of you know? Well, yeah, what are the health benefits of of drinking kefir? Like the known ones, not like oh, people say I feel a little bit better. What do what do you know? So, water kefir predominantly produces the lactobacillus strain, um, which is predominantly found in things like yogurt, um, Yakult. And these guys specialize in healing and soothing your villi, which is your gut lining. Um, and obviously it has other bacteria as well. It's quite div- diverse. Um, it is able to repopulate your gut microbiome. So what you lack, it replenishes. But in terms of health benefits that you can see um, for us, it was, for me, it was psoriasis. Oh, yeah? You yeah. had psoriasis? I grew up with really bad psoriasis. Oh, did you? Yeah, um, but... That kind of got us into this, but it wasn't because of me. It was because of Adrian, because he had other gut issues. Oh, did you? What did yeah. you do? Yeah. Um, I had a ganglion on my toe. And ganglion cyst? Yeah, yeah ganglion yeah, cyst. Got, yeah. Mine's gone. Is it? Is it? Um, it's, it's gone for me. Um, prior to that, I was coaching tennis. And what happened was I actually went to get it lacerated. So what they did was they poked the needle in, they sucked Drain it up, they I, drained I also it up. had a ganglion cyst yeah, on my and foot. It, and then it came back again. Yeah, yeah, I smashed mine down. <laughs> I with tried, a, with, it with, did not work. With a, with my other foot. I uh, stomped on it with my other foot. Did it work? Yeah, it worked. But oh, then it yeah. came back. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, but now it's gone. And this yogurt, yogurt sorry, I, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I just got excited because I was like sitting <laughs> in the bed. The other week I was like, oh, you know, my, my ganglion's gone because they want to cut it out and this, that, and I'm yeah. like, mm-hmm. I'm not that fucking bothered, you know, whatever yeah. it's, it is, it was, I actually quite enjoyed it. Like, I used to rub it and stuff. It was whatever. It, it's, actually, it's, it's actually quite painful after a while. Oh, mine, mine never got painful. It was painful on, like, when I wear my shoes. I, I sort of know that it's there. And yeah, the, yeah. That time it, it gets bigger and bigger. It, mine was quite protruding as well. And also, <laughs> but it, was like, you know, it didn't hurt. But you know, like, when you've got a, a loose tooth as a child yep. and you want to play with it? That's, oh, that, yes, that, that, that's how it felt for me. So, I, mine was... I actually burst it before once. So what happened was on my toe, I kept pressing it when I think I was watching TV or something. Yeah, yeah. And I did feel a little pop and it just sort of went flat. Yeah, yeah. But it would always come back after a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, taking kefir sort of helped you to control it. You so think it's gone? You think that's what it is? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, maybe. It's maybe also to right. do with the, I, I guess, the change of diet and everything as well. So just eating more clean, um, obviously the probiotics to go with it and cutting down on all the nasty stuff yeah, that yeah. really makes a lot of difference because it has to do with leaky gut doesn't it yeah. the cysts and well ganglion and whatnot. so leaky gut I heard about yeah. that because sugar eats away at the stomach lining and, and that's what gives you leaky yeah. gut I, I just heard it sounds fucking revolting leaky gut <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> Jesus. What's, what's going on yeah, 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 yeah. No. I just think there's some old guy in you know, a nursing home. Do you know what I mean? I can't help it. That's what I think. I'm like, <laughs> just leaky. seeping out yeah. quietly. Yeah, like, oh exactly. gosh, give him a bag, get some <laughs> towel. Like, oh. That's what I think of. But um, but this this stops that the, the leaky gut. Ha- yeah, well, happens. it heals the leaky gut because what it is with a leaky gut is your villi. So they're like these finger-like projections in your intestines and they're getting really inflamed and they're dying and crenating and getting really upset. And so they're splitting apart, creating the walls to, to become more permeable. That's why they call it leaky gut. It's not yeah. exactly, you know, things yeah, seeping yeah. out of your body, but inside it is kind of internally within your gut or your intestinal lining. So things are seeping out. It's getting your body gets more inflamed. So it shows up with things like cysts, uh, psoriasis, um, sometimes uh, moo. Moods, but, yeah, mood swings yeah, or feeling mood depressed swings, or whatever because um, they're saying that a little bit more agitated or young yeah but yeah. they're saying that there's no actual paper that says it's definitely uh, what's all, um, definitive d- yeah that, that says that depression yep. is 
you know, in stomach, there is an actual definite, but they really believe that it is. There's just no yeah. study done right now. They just can't 100% prove it, but they definitely think that that's the way it's going. Yeah, that's the thing, like, because um, a lot of your serotonin is dependent on your gut system as well. So yeah. it's it's very interesting to see how all the studies that are going through it right now and just to see where it goes through in the next yeah, few yeah. years, because, wow, it's just mind-blowing, though, isn't it? Like, it? Definitely. And serotonin mm. is the thing that helps you sleep, isn't it? And, and, and helps your mood? Is uh, that, is that what that's it is? melatonin. Uh, but serotonin is more the, of your happiness vibe, oh, so okay. it's your happiness uh, receptor. But right, okay. yeah, so it all has to do with all that wellness realm of it all. So yeah, and, and, yeah. And so this this definitely it really helps with all that kind of thing. And your and skin and like I had a, I had my gallbladder took out. You know, yep. which looking back, fuck, I regret that. I really like oh. I, I was that person that got the gallbladder took out and then did research about it. I was like, <laughs> why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's true that's seriously true like uh, I had these ma- I had attacks for a lot of years like probably 10 like gastric reflux or something yeah or? But, like yeah like gastric reflux or, well so what happened was I thought it was gastric re- like you know acid we call that yeah. acid yeah like that, that burn and that you know that pain in your chest and all the rest of it. fuck I thought I was dying or something oh like that. shit but the then I would take an antacid, you know, mm-hmm. like a tablet. 40 minutes later, 50 minutes later, it would go. Mm-hmm. So I just put it down to that. That's what I thought it was. When it, Then I got two bad ones, real bad ones, like on the verge of going to hospital. Really, One was really bad, and then one was incredibly bad. Oh, where it was like, normally the attacks would last 45, 50, an hour. That second worst one was like an hour and 10. The last one was like two and a half hours. I mean, two and a half hours of rolling around it, like sweating bucket. It was just unbelievable. The pain was off the chart. Yeah. And I thought, right, that's enough. I, like, I've, like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm going to have to go to the doctors. So then I went to the doctors. Everyone would probably think, you should have gone to the doctors before that, but whatever. I went to the doctors <laughs> then. Went to the specialist. They did like an ultrasound like you do when you have a, when you have a mm-hmm. baby. And I had a look and they're like, oh yeah, your gobble is just full of shit, basically. They said it's like scooping out a puddle. You don't have stones. If you get like a muddy puddle and you scoop your hand and all that grit, they said it's you, your gallbladder is just full of that grit. Oh, like wow. it's, it's saying, so they said, we'll just take it out. I was like, and I said, and that'll be it. I'll be fixed. And they were like, yeah, yeah, that'll be it. You'll be, it's all good. Yeah, you, that'll be it. Good as gold. I was like, all right, we'll take it out. Then I got it took out and I was like, maybe I should have done a bit of research on this. And I started looking and like, and when I did stu- started studying, like, oh, actually you don't need to get it removed. There's other ways, like probably, probably probiotics. And I yep, didn't know about diet, change, and diet yeah. change and all this, that, the other. But anyway, it's gone. So fuck it. Now I can do now. So yeah, <laughs> now I get on the care yeah. And I'm bit, that's why I'm pretty st- trying to get more and more into gut health because, but even after then I was getting a tiny little bit of like acid reflux, but I don't know if it was that, but I, since I've been drinking kefir, gone. That's awesome. How gone. long ago was that? I got my, my gallbladder took yeah. out. Yeah. I don't know. A couple of years. Couple oh, of years wow, ago, okay. Like yeah. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, it's a funny story. A bit off the subject, but I'll tell it anyway. Yeah. I go in. At the time I was training, I was pretty fit. Took my took my uh, my tests and all the rest of it. And I said, oh, yeah, bloody hell, you're really fit. Normally, um, gallbladders took out with middle-aged overweight ladies yeah. that's generally the, that's generally, and they were like you're here get your gallbladder took out I was like yeah I know yeah. and they were probably thinking has this dickhead done any research he doesn't need to get his <laughs> anyway yeah. we'll it. take it anyway yeah exactly we'll have research whatever anyway um, I had to get, get to the, the whole thing gets it all done all good back in the back in the room recovery monitoring every hour monitoring you've got a tube I've got proper leaky gut a tube coming oh, out yeah. the side of yeah. me drain bag the whole thing it's brutal Anyway, lady comes in. Yeah, every hour, no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, all good. Check the bag. All good. All good. All good. This is all through the day. And then all through the night, they come in. Then about six o'clock in the morning, the lady comes in and she's like, "Uh," oh. I'm like, "Uh?" Oh. She's never said that before. And like, I was just expecting to come in and go straight back yeah. out again. I was like, okay. She goes out, and another late. She comes in with another nurse. I'm like, "Uh," oh. and I knew I was bed thirty six. Or 30, 32 or 36, whatever it was. I knew at the time. And, a little um, bit worrisome there. Yeah, and then she, then I heard, like, uh, then another one coming. She got in the, the scuffle away, and they're like, I'm like, oh, fuck. And I heard, cold blue, cold blue, bed 32. I was like, then I heard, like, the trolley coming down. I was like, that's fucking me. That's me. What's going on? Next thing you know, there's just, like, 15 people around me. I'm like... Okay, Whoa, well, there's okay. obviously something not right here. What's going on? I'm like, what's going on? Can someone tell me? Like, uh, your bag's this full. And it was just full of, like, whatever it was. Anyway, the surgeon comes. He was like, we're going to have to go back in. So this is like, I've just had a surgery. That oh. next morning, they were like, we're going to have to go back in. There's something not right. And basically, 
I think a, I think a, a trainee or so like a, a because I was young and not a middle age, not risk low risk low. Um, yeah, a little risk, basically. They let someone else maybe have a go. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, a practice <laughs> right? run. Practice yeah, which is... Someone won't die on you, yeah, okay? Yeah, exactly, yeah. which I totally understand, which yeah. is totally fair enough. But then it burst, whatever it was, where the connection, it burst, and I started bleeding. Uh, I don't want to say internal bleeding, because that's yeah. like... Re- but it was something internal was leaking, and it was filling this bag, and it was pretty serious. Anyway, I got rushed back off to surgery again, back under, fucking back in, oh, switch back gosh. up and then back out again. Anyway, yeah. But now, so that, like I said, I should have done a bit more research. Yeah. At the beginning. Wow. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, God. So, yeah, that's my that's my gut health. So that's why I'm a little, that's why I'm really I'm into Kefi. That's why I want to help spread the word. Yeah. And I want to get a lot of people. I've got my mum and dad into it and everything. So, oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So what's the difference between water Kefi and milk Kefi? Um, truth is, you get a few bacteria that are different um, yeah. from it, but more or less, it's kind of the same. Um, Start the same grains, the whole thing. The starter is the same. It looks a little bit different. Um, they're both a symbiotic culture. Um, so water kefir and milk kefir grains, or well, oh, sorry, when I say the same, they're not actually the same, but the fermentation process is the same. Okay. So milk kefir eats away the sugar in milk, it eats away the lactose. Yeah. Um, and water kefir eats away sugar. Um, the microbes that they produce, uh, they cross over, so more or less the same. Not exactly the same, but more or less the same. Yeah. Um, for us, we started with water kefir, so that's why it's always been water kefir, but yeah. there is milk kefir as well. Yeah. It's a bit brutal, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, not everybody can consume yeah, milk yeah. kefir. It's not straight. It's nice in pancakes. Yeah. We make pancakes out of it. Oh, it's a lot. Yep. Mm. So good. Yeah, the fluffiness, pan- yeah. Oh, and the, they've just got that, like, um, you know, they're, they're just not, like, black and white. They've got, like, you know, they've got a bit more depth of flavour, yeah. you know what I mean? I love them. We have them with, with uh, Schultz, Schultz milk. I'm big, always yeah. shouting out Schultz. I love Schultz. Yeah. Um, with Schultz butter, their new butter, and uh, honey, which, again, we get from the farmer's market. So, like, proper honey, not yeah, shit. Yeah, of course. Not, not, not that shit glucose, whatever mixed up. No, no, no mix like, up. proper honey yeah. from the farmer. If anyone's going to get honey, get it from the farmer's market. I totally market. agree not, with that. Not yeah, we know that, too, yeah. Honey. That's, it's not even honey, that other stuff. Anyway, we've got we've got rooftop nice. bees coming to tell us all about honey. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's so, really nice. Again, I'm into honey as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, it is a bit more brutal, isn't it? It's, what would you advise? Would you, if people are going to eat it, mix it with yogurt or eat it with food? Or what would, uh, the milk of your... Um, put it in smoothies. Put, put it in smoothies, eat it kind of as a yogurt substitute, but it's hard to have sour milk. It's... Yeah. it's it, the whole process for some people is just not natural. Yeah. For kids, it freaks them out. You know, the taste, it can be, depending on how you make it, it can be a bit punchy. Yeah, for sure. And just sour milk is not something you want to take out and just have with you on a casual basis. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, something that you have and you almost feel like you're medicating or you feel like, oh, I have to do this because it's, it's for my health. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. But uh, water kefir, we, we resonated with because it, just worked out well for us. Um, it didn't flare up my mucus lining because I grew up with really bad asthma also. Oh, okay. You had and a rough time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, my gut health was wrecked as a child. Yeah. I literally had a cake every day. Every Did you? Every day and chips. Did I you had a candle mean? stuck on top of it with a birthday song and then I would eat. I would not eat otherwise. Oh, really? Yeah. So my gut was ruined. Oh, so you did it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, my, my, I well, encourage you know, your mum. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, whatever. You know, <laughs> but let's be totally, we can blame them, I think. But at the end of the day, the knowledge wasn't out there. Yeah, you know? totally. It, it's a foot. I talk about this all the time. It, it's a real, we're in a real crazy stage right now within food, I believe, because yeah. grandparents... And that kind of knew all this back in the day, fermenting and all the rest of it. Then it died. And, you know, I always go on about this, you know. And then there was, like, probably my parents and our parents' generation where where microwaves come in fashion. Fast food. Fast food come in fashion. And pasteurization. All these new technologies come in. And then all of a sudden, you know, big brands started using all these. And then you don't know. You know it's all I mean? about efficiency, speed, keeping yeah, ex- things. Exactly. And da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like my p- grandparents didn't even have a fridge back in the day. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And all these kind of where fridges come in and then freezers come in and all these. So now we, could, we you know, we, we're kind of learning from our parents' mistakes in a lot of ways, but especially within food. And now we're trying to pull it back around, educate people and say, look, that was pretty shit. We got robbed. Basically, we yeah. got robbed. We got conned. We got tricked into buying that shite. 
And now we're trying to say, look, maybe look at doing other, eating other ways and trying to build that immune back up amongst people. I read something yeah. as well about if mothers drink caffeine and things during pregnancy, it really helps the baby. Yeah, well, it helps. Um, we, we've done a lot of reading in that aspect as well. And we've got a lot of, like, we're, they're now babies now, but from the start of the journey, you know, pregnant ladies that consume water kefir because, um, for one, we, we have a few really close customers that struggled with morning sickness. Yeah. And our ginger water kefir really helped them. So, you know, they consumed it. And now we're, we're seeing the byproducts of the new generations of the, the, the kefir babies. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really cool So hopefully that. they'll be going up with strong guts straight from the yeah. get-go. And if it just keeps going, and you know, and we can maybe pull that round. Yeah, you know? definitely, because it's all about re- replenishing the microbiome. And like you said, you know, it's, I, I believe that it wasn't because... You know, it was the annihilation of, oh, let's just go all process. And uh, we weren't exactly con, but I don't think the knowledge was there. Um, and I think all these companies just really got into the hype and the buzz and the excitement of, oh, my gosh, we can preserve this food for months or years and it doesn't go bad. But we didn't think of the repercussions. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But I, I definitely believe we got con in the sugar and, yep. a, and animal, oh, yeah. and animal yep. fats yep. because uh, you know they knew they knew that it was bad they, they know yeah, that it's but worse know than it, cocaine yeah exactly. and they know mm. it's cheap and they know and all the rest of it they know that it's causing damage but they're making big money like I've seen it referred to the tobacco industry you know the, mm-hmm. the way that they're reacting now is the same as the way the tobacco industry acted when they got hang on a minute this isn't healthy yeah. and, the rest of it. And, the, and they got scientists actually got paid uh, paid out um to say that it wasn't bad for you, that it was like fats, animal fats, like butter yeah. and lard and these kind of things, what's causing um, cholesterol and saying cholesterol's bad for you. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but you know, that, I know that scientists definitely got paid out to say that that's what's bad and sugar isn't the one that's causing the damage. Where actually, in fact, it was the sugar causing damage and the fats, there's not, you, you can eat as much animal fat as you want. It's going to, it's going to be nothing. It's not going to give you a heart attack. Oh, sugar is super concentrated at the end of the day too. So it's, uh, you can, you could see the effects in children, you know, with yeah, sugar. Yeah, like, ex- hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it's doing that to them, like if you're having too much and you're having shakes, what's going on? Yeah, you know? and behavior yeah. And, and all kinds, exactly. And, mm. Like I say, kids, you could go so deep in it. I love it, man. Where, like, you know, kids are drinking monster drinks or whatever. I don't know. Are they called monster drinks? Yeah, Energy yeah, Monster, yeah. Um, V. V, yeah. Like, on the way to school. Do you yep. know what I mean? They're rocking up at school <laughs> off the heads and then expecting <laughs> to sit down and study and, and, and all the rest. Do you know, it's just, I don't know. Like, I was saying to Beck the other day, I said, like, why don't they just ban it? That's it. That's it. Like if it's I, I don't think you could ever win, though. Well, like you said, it's quite close to the tobacco industry, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, just, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, they're greasing so many palms and, you know, and all yeah. the rest of it. But it just drives me mad. It drives me mad when you see the World Cup and you see McDonald's and, you know, all, like, it's all money. It's just money. It's really frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, and you, so the other one that everyone talks about is kombucha. Yeah. So what... First of all, what's the difference between kombucha and, and kefir again? So kombucha, for one, it produces beneficial bacteria as well. Um, kombucha produces more acetic acid um, in the fermentation process. The byproducts in terms of taste, you can taste it. It tastes different. So kombucha is a close cousin to vinegar. Oh, okay. Um, it's exceptionally good to alkaline and detoxify your body. It does have some beneficial bacteria in it uh, and enzymes, but what it is is it's great to detoxify and alkaline your body with. Water kefir is uh, a cousin of yogurt or um, your dairy-based ferments. Yeah. And what that is is it produces more of the lactobacillus strain, so that's great for soothing and healing your villi. In short, it's why water kefir is great for your gut or healing your gut and kombucha is really great to alkaline your body with and also obviously kombucha is fermented tea yeah. um, and fermented tea it contains a little bit of caffeine um, so it depends on whether you can consume caffeine or not we generally recommend kombucha midday yeah, um, yeah. just because it's great as a pick me up you know it's way better than an energy drink yeah, yeah. Um, you can get your dose of caffeine that way and in water kefir in the morning or evenings or just any time really but yeah, it doesn't yeah. have that caffeine and also it's softer to the palate as well it doesn't produce acetic acid as much as kombucha does yeah um, it's yeah. still nice the kombucha is still nice yeah and it's good to consume both there's no such thing as like kombucha is better than kefir no or way, kefir yeah. is better than kombucha they're both very good for your gut 
um, yeah. in general. So it's good to consume both. You know, you don't have to have a lot of them, but at least mix it up. You know, when you say you don't have to have a lot, what what would what is your recommended dose of of uh, kefir? I guess that's what you do, so you'll probably know that better. We recommend. Uh, having 50 meals in the morning and 50 meals in the evening. Yep. Um, it's like having oranges for vitamin C. You can have one orange a day or 10 oranges in a day um, for 10 days. So it depends on how you want to do it, but you don't want to overdo it as well. So yeah, you Especially wanna, at the beginning, right? Is that right? Yeah. At the beginning? Yeah. At the beginning, you want to sort of ease your gut into it so that they, uh, your gut understands it and then only um, consume it as a regular beverage because you don't want to shock your system as well too much. Yeah. So you... So you it, it, I don't want to say a medicine because you know that's ridiculous. But I'm saying like <laughs> you would say maybe just have on a morning have a have a small fifty you know fifty mil you know yeah. have a swig in the morning with your breakfast or whatever, and yeah. then on an evening with your di- after your dinner or whatever, just do it again. Yeah, you can do that, um, or you can even mix it up with your juices or your smoothies. Um, that way, you don't have to just consume it on its own. You can yeah, mix yeah. it in with your juices, and that that's really feeding yourself with a good bacteria for for the day really yeah, yeah. i try yeah. and i try to do that but fuck i just, just i just slug it like, <laughs> yeah i tell you what i love it's I, I have a bath i love a bath if anyone knows me knows i have like a two-hour bath red hot bath sweat oh yeah how do you keep the water warm just oh, yeah, keep, keep tripling just it in and yeah. letting it out tripling yeah. it in and letting it out yeah i think that's really good for you for the uh, heat yeah. shock proteins I, th- I also believe that as well and loads of anyway and then i come down and i just slug a half a bottle of uh, yeah kefir. i love it i swear yeah. God, i feel so good after that just replenishing yeah, yeah yeah exactly I feel like it's just all you know bro science is what they say you know but I feel like it's all cut sweat out of me and then mm-hmm. I'm just putting good in you yeah, know what I mean it, yeah, okay. it makes that's no the sense way, that, but yeah, no. that's the way I that's the way I take it so that'll do me So and I'm happy with that so that'll, I'm, I'm good at that I like the way you put it so. yeah yeah for sure <laughs> and why does it go fizzy so it goes fizzy because it's a part of the fermentation process. Yeah. Um, what it is, is during the fermentation process, when the water kefir grains eats up the sugar, uh, the byproduct of it is a little bit of fizz. Oh, it's farts. Yeah. yeah it so yeah. we're really having their byproduct. Yeah. yeah. The whole part. Yeah. For sure. But what we do also is um, our fizz uh, also comes a little bit through our pressure line. Yeah. Um, because of our bottling process and what we do is a non-alcoholic water kefir um, because if you don't control it properly, it becomes alcoholic um, yeah. like any other ferment. And so how do you do that? Yeah, well, just we cold time? shock it. Yeah, it's it's time. Um, so we don't let it ferment. Or oh, cold shock it. Yeah, okay, okay. so we cold shock it and we... we to stop the ferment. To stop the ferment, yes. Yeah, and yeah. because of that, um, we put it in a, a, a big, I suppose, pressure vessel or a big vat. Um, they just sit in there and cold shocks it really quickly and knocks out the yeast because then the yeast won't you know keep fermenting, fermenting yeah um and then after we do our own measurements in terms of alcohol and whatnot make sure it's all coherent um it's all fermented through we measure the ph you know we do lab testing batch tests yeah every um, time not every time yeah, just um, random yeah, yeah, yeah random batch tests just to, do. yeah do so it's, it's very interesting seeing the results during like the warmer months and when it's not yeah yeah um, so what 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 do you test for? We do mainly we do shelf life and yep. call that and all these kind of things. Not mainly shelf life to be honest. What so what's yours? What, what? We do shelf life. Uh, we do sugar obviously. Um, we do because we do sugar because solely because our sugar levels can vary a little bit. Um, yeah. And that's solely because we use natural products. Fruits, uh, certain times of the year are sweeter, uh, certain times of the year it isn't. But yeah, okay. in saying that, it's, it's just very, very, very minimal. Yeah. Um, so in terms of basic testing, but then we also taste for the bacterial strains as well. So the lactobacillus strain. Um, mainly and, in the test. And do you, is it is it like a parameter that you have to you want to be within like ten thousand, five thousand? Yeah, the, uh, we're still working out the parameter. Yeah. Um, and because t- at the moment we're just going through the whole process and saying, okay, cool. So this is where it was sitting at during summer. Yeah. This is where it's sitting at during the colder months. So we're trying to work out that balance. But the goal is to work within a parameter, and yeah. that way we can say, hey, there is guaranteed X amount uh, billion of, of probiotics per bottle. Yeah, that's what you so, want. Yeah. Definitely, everyone wants that. You know, everyone yeah. wants to know that. Don't that's no, of course. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if if you were to buy something and consume something, you want to know what goes into you. Like yeah, we yeah. want to know. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. at the moment, you're just monitoring it over time. And like you said, different fruits or like um, 
uh, strawberry or raspberry with a bit, maybe a bit more sugar maybe I don't know I'm, yeah. I'm totally just guessing here yeah. I have no idea and then you've got you know ginger or something with maybe less sugar is this yeah. right I have yeah, no idea that's, that's absolutely correct is this right yeah, so you're going to yeah. get so what for that you have to add more sugar to the to the ginger or, or how do you how do you bulk it up we, we don't add more sugar um, longer it's ferment just, yeah well it's just for our knowledge to know uh, oh, mainly so that's you, yeah. that's, you. It's just that's where us. the skill comes in yeah we're, we're collecting a whole bunch of data and we have been collecting a whole bunch of data since the very beginning yeah just just so we can learn because this was this is so home based in the beginning, you know? This was so cottage style. We went to Europe, we learned how to ferment, da 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 da. Where, where but about? uh we went Poland to learn how to ferment and mm. we went to Berlin as well. Yeah, cabbage, isn't it? Fuck up. Yeah, and well go, cabbage uh, yeah, and cabbage, sausages kvass, and that. Yeah, um yeah, yeah I, well everything there. So it's it's amazing because otherwise they wouldn't survive there. Yeah, if over it's, the it's over so the yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to keep that food, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't sure. even need refrigeration. Every apartment has a little bit of a cellar space downstairs and everyone just stores their stuff down there. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, in England yeah. In the, you know in the winter we just keep the beers in the garden oh no oh, yes yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know and, or yeah just literally you, at Christmas and that you go out the back door and you know, all your beer and wine on it's just outside yeah. you just get it freezing none of this esky and short no, summer yeah fuck, no way. <laughs> yeah yeah but they're having a great summer anyway at the moment, so yeah. that's fantastic so yeah you went over there and learned about that there yeah so I'm guessing you had these problems. You heard you you had you had a few problems as well and then then what so then you got how where did you hear about it first of all. We did a little bit of research, research ourselves. So we are very into sports. Yeah. Um, Adrian was a tennis coach um, and he grew up just loving and playing tennis. Um, Who's I your favourite player? Um, <laughs> it would be Andre Agassi. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Agassi, Nadal and then obviously Federer as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nadal over Federer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, yeah, Nadal over Federer. Yeah. yeah, I love I love Nadal. But I, 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 I've got the tennis every year, but it's hard to watch, man. Like if you're live, he's the worst to watch. He's just I, I don't know. It's agree, really hot. He, I, well, yeah. he's all so repetitive. You know, he pulls his the, kegs yeah. out of his ass. Is he? Uh, <laughs> you know, it takes. And then, he won't step on the line. Step and and every, then you, I end up getting like fixated on watching him instead of watching the tennis. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then I'm like, I just can't watch him anymore. <laughs> I used to love him, but now I'm like, he just drives me mad watching him. It, watching him drives me mad watching him. Do you know what I mean? It's like stop watching him. But anyway, so yeah, you've been. You, you, you did you play tennis? Yeah, I did. I did. I did play tennis. Um, since I was seven years old, so oh, I played yeah. uh, a bit of tennis. Um, played in Malaysia as well are where, you, I'm from. where are you from Malaysia uh, Malaysia yeah. yeah so played in Malaysia played uh, played for the state came to Melbourne um, just played for a club in Melbourne as well so just just been playing the whole time and yeah. you still play now I uh, still play but just a bit less now because uh, obviously business yeah work, is, <laughs> work takes up a bit of time boss. and um, hmm. I play pennant on Saturday I used to play pennant on Saturdays but because we've got markets on Saturdays now I can't yeah. even make it for that yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah it's annoying it's yeah. so annoying uh, yeah, we could go anyway. I've put ten kilos on since I put since we started the business. Yep. I used to train five days a week, four days a week minimum. Yeah, I'll be lucky if I get there once or twice. Do a you week play soccer or something? No, like? I, I'm I'm no good at anything. <laughs> I'm no good no. at anything. No, honestly, no. I've run a bit, I box a bit, I, you awesome. know, jujitsu a bit, bits of no bits of both, but I'm I'm not very good at anything. Like, nothing, just a pretty much of it all. You know, whatever. That's Give it good, a go. Though. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so you got into that, yeah, and then you 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 decided you you decided you heard about it. you did a bit of research. You had your gang and sis, you had psoriasis, and then you just started doing it. And what? And just got some grains. Is this I how actually it didn't. I actually didn't do the research. I had the problems. Um, I didn't know how to fix it. But Ivy man was, style, right? Yeah, I, 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 I was just like, oh yeah, my ganglion's uh, just bothering me, but it's okay. I'll deal with it. I'll yeah. see the doctor. They they suck it out, and we'll see what happens. But Ivy was the one that actually picked it up to say. This has to do with leaky gut, and therefore I'm gonna get you something to fix this. And now you you're gonna consume water kefir. So uh, we start. I started consuming it. She started consuming a little bit, and then eventually we were like, "Hey, we could make some of this." And then we got some grains ourselves. We started making it, and we both started noticing the health difference. Uh, yeah. Health benefits. Benefits. Yeah. yeah. So then we just started consuming it. We were actually selling um, bone broth at the farmers market during that time. So before your your kefir business, you had a bone broth business. Well, so we, yeah, we were helping out um, some family members that had a soup business. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what it is was 
they then decided, oh, we're going to go try and have a start a family and oh, this market thing, you guys do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we were making water kefir um, at home at home for ourselves. Yeah. And Adrian noticed the health benefits. I noticed the health benefits, and we started giving it away at farmers markets for free. Yeah. Yeah. No, Beautiful. we were giving it away. I don't know if you know uh, Jackie from White Hen. No, she, white Hen Tarts. White Hen Tarts. So she, she sells tarts. Yeah, okay. Um, and so we gave some to her and then she's like, hey, I really need to get some off you. Like, And we're like, ah, it's fine. We'll bring some the next month, you know, and bring yeah, some, yeah. da, 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 da. And she's like, no, it's becoming really awkward now. Because we, I'm taking so yeah. much and I need it. I'm yeah, selling she's it like, you need yeah. to sell it. And we're like, eh, yeah, nah, just take it. We'll work out something. Yeah. So we did that, and then she really stomped her foot, and she said, stop it, do it. So at one point, uh, we had a half bone broth or soup stall at the farmer's market and half kefir stall. And the month started to get a bit warmer. Um, soup wasn't really a thing. Moving, yeah, yeah. And like I didn't really want to do the cooking side of it. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Maybe we'll just try this water kefir thing. Um, and it really started off with the ice lollies. Oh, did it? Yeah, because mm. we're like, hey, this summer. is cool, it's summer, yeah, you know, yeah. like ice lollies, da, da, da. it was so ridiculous, like we didn't even have the proper setup for it, we were giving it away by the end of the day on the market, <laughs> we're like, oh, just take it, otherwise it'll melt, just <laughs> yeah. take it, just take it, so yeah. we did that, yeah. um, but then we realised, hey, there is a market for it, um, because for ourselves, you know, when we feel like we're out in a cafe or something, and back then, you know, the kombucha buzz wasn't so big yet. Yeah, you, yeah. There was no option for it. We're like, wouldn't it be nice if we were it could to even, have that alternative? Because even like it's either soda, yeah. or pure juice. I don't like I don't like either to be honest. Yeah. I, I don't mind a bit of orange juice, but I like to dilute it with water. Not that I mean, yeah. I'm not. A, it's I'm, a bit too I'm sweet. overweight. I don't train. Don't think I'm any kind of like fitness, and I do care about what I eat and, yeah. and everything. But like. I don't like to drink pure orange, and that's the only options: or pure apple juice, or soda, that, or it's water. It's better to have an orange on its own. Yeah, yeah, the fibers ex- exactly. Yeah. So you you were thinking like this would be a good alternative in a cafe for them people. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can so see we're like, that. oh yeah, why don't we do that? So we started doing that. Um, one thing led to another, and here we are. So it's it's been a process since. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Sure, we're man. we're both doing it full time now. So yeah. yeah. That's good. And how long has that been? About. Two two years plus, yeah. just a bit over two years. Yeah, yeah. and you've have you, have you got your own facility, or did, how did you, did you share a facility, or how did it, how did you get going? Ah, uh, well, we first started fermenting at home, obviously, yeah. and then when we needed the space, we decided, oh, how do we make this proper? So we went to well, we advertised for a space Gumtree. Uh, on Gumtree, yeah, you know, hey, seeking space, da da da. Yeah. So we got contacted by a lovely lady. Uh, that owned a cafe at that point in time. She said, you know, I don't really use much of it. I sell tea. Um, so why do you come in? So we in went Mornington? In, no, we were actually based... Uh, we were living in South Yarra. Yeah. Uh, fermenting in Camberwell. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's just there. Yeah, yeah. back of the yeah, cafe. Yeah. Um, and then we decided, hey, you know what? It's too much of a thing right now because we needed refrigeration space, da da da, da. Um, So we sat down. And on a map, we drew a circumference of 50 kilometers from where we were. Yeah. And just on weekends, we would just drive out and just try and look for a space. Uh, eventually, we found Mornington. Yeah. Uh, found a little old butcher space in Hastings. Yeah. Uh, and we decided, hey, I think this might be it. We and it, it said Talese or something, did it? Yeah, yeah Talese. Okay, so yeah, we yeah. contacted them and we're like, this is all kind of ready. So we started fermenting out of the space. Well, Has we, it got a shop front or not? Yep, it's a, have it's, you got a shop front now? Oh, not so much. So uh, some things have changed since. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit crazy. So it was an old retail space, uh, pretty much Main Street of Hastings. Yeah. Butcher shop, been vacant for two years. We went in, cleaned it out. Fridge, did it have walk in? Yep, yeah, had yeah, a walk in cool room. So we're like, this place is forever perfect. Yeah. Like, we can even sell, you know, like kimchi cheese toasties yeah, here yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. Get it. Yeah, yeah, get it. Then production took place, um, wholesale slowly superseded what we could really produce in a retail sense. So then we shut the retail end of it. We um, did exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's hard. Like with all these ideas at that point in time, you're like, it's going to be so perfect. But yeah, yeah. Have you outgrew it, Neely? We have outgrown it. Um, we're yeah. busting out of the seams, yeah. carrying boxes and boxes. It was just 
full on. Yeah. Um, and we are now setting up our new production facility in Caram Downs. Yeah, awesome. So, so, you, so, so, you, so you're moving. We're, yeah. m- we're moving, but we're not moving home this time around. So we're, we're living in Mornington still. Yeah. But we're moving from Hastings to Caram Downs for production. Is. Oh, is that uh, it's in between Dandenong and Frankston. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah. it's just on that on the yeah. Mornington Freeway or whatever it's called. Yes, that was it called. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The it's Peninsula Link. Yeah, yeah, Peninsula Link. Yeah, Link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so what, and what's this new facility? It's um, a lot bigger. So it's kind of like a factory site. Um, it allows us to have a bigger cool room. Yeah. Um, just everything. I'm getting jealous. So it's, keep going. It's, <laughs> it's just going to be a little bit more streamlined, you know. Just yeah, things yeah. like streamlined is so important. Fuck yeah, it's important. Like there is a handful of us in the business, and it's hard because we we call it crossfitting sometimes because seriously, every single bottle, every single box, it's carried by us. Yeah. Everything has gone through at least one of us. Yeah. So it's it's so full on, like it's ridiculous when people drop off the delivery. Like, you know how you get deliveries or pallets or bottles come through yeah. and they just leave it, and you know, in a container or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At our old site, um, that was not possible because we didn't have a storage facility out there. Yeah. We had a little shed. Yeah. We would then move the bottles, unpack it, pack it into boxes, and then bring every single box into the shed to store. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, don't love <laughs> yeah. it in too much because we're in <laughs> yeah. that fucking boat still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, when, a, when a truck comes to us with mm-hmm. a pallet on, a pallet of jars, it reverses up. And then from, the, from there, we don't have a forklift because of where we are. Yes. We have to, we have to manually run the, the, the boxes of jars from the yep. thing in between the cars along. And then we, we bought a... Um, a container ship purely to store jars and that's store such a, a brilliant beauty. idea yeah it's great as well if anyone is looking to get one i got i was going to rent one mm-hmm. and I, a great guy could have just rented me i would have just bought it. it was like whatever x amount a month or whatever and he said listen i'll tell you the truth so if you buy a container ship today which is like i think <laughs> maybe i was conned no but he said if you buy <laughs> if you buy a container ship this is the truth you'll pay anywhere between two and a half to three grand depending on the standard or whatever he said you can keep that container ship for three four five years in that time you'll sell it again for anywhere between two and three grand they don't, so you don't miss out you don't lose yet. out you don't yeah. you, because they don't depreciate a container ship is a container ship that's it end of story you have to pay to move it or whatever it might be so he said there's just no point in, in hiring it if you can afford to spend the money so we just we bought it we were that's a to, really good yeah, idea so we just bought it perfect absolutely perfect it's massive it's 20 foot Real high, you can store yeah. so much in there. And that changed out. Prior to that, we were bringing them down, where I said, down the stairs, and where in the in the shop, there was a, I built a mezzanine. I just got these yeah. guys to build a mezzanine. Yeah. And then we had to go, I would go up the ladders, and Tim would have to lift up every box, and I would have to put it on the mezzanine. It was just a It makes me feel good what you're saying right now, because we don't feel so stupid. It's exactly the yeah. same. Oh, like, yeah, you've oh. just got to do it. Like, yeah. what else are you going to do? Like, we, we don't, you know, you've just got to make it happen. And we also... Dependent on weather as well. So if it's gonna rain, I have to actually quickly call up the the bottle company and say, um, can we change the delivery schedule because uh, it's gonna be raining <laughs> and we can't receive the bottles because we can't leave it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we, we're not checking the weather. The rain weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's it, big storage. They take up a lot of space. Jars, bottles. Yeah. You know, jar, bottles will even be worse than jars. You know. You know, yeah. they take up so much space. It's, pretty full on and it gets pretty heavy too yeah like, yeah for sure you're sweating by the end of moving a pallet yeah. of jars you know I'm freaking out yeah when you were saying pallet we're actually it's, yeah it's, it yeah. sounded so familiar yeah which is actually quite nice to know that you, you're you doing the same thing yeah I think, it, I think that's a go like every and we were the same when we got the shop the, the, now we, we had it and we were serving we were doing ready meals and things I wish we could still do it I, I miss that I do miss that a little bit but then the wholesale did a lot better than we expected yeah. And then we had to divide it where the shop is. We've changed that into like a portioning room and cry back in and the girls work in there to wrap and the, and the rest of it. So we, yeah, we had these ideas and then, you know, seven months in, we were like, uh, well, we, 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 what are we going to do? We, we either go hard on the shop or go hard on the wholesale and it's a, it's a no yeah. brainer. Yeah. Wholesale is the only way. It yeah. really is. At least that way your product's able to reach out to a greater audience. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. I believe wholesale, you know, I think when you open your doors, as a shop, you're relying on, every, you know, mm. you, we've got 140 stores or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, and also regarding 
weather. Like in the city, in the summer, our business drops off, but yet morning turn and in the, the beachside places, they all pick up. So it keeps kind of level. Yeah. All, do you know what I mean? So you can go and find business. Well, if, like, if we wanted to take on a new staff member, which we did, we knew we had to ramp up production. So then we just get our feet on the road and, and start finding new new people uh, to sell to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then as it as it comes up to Christmas, we ramp down. And then after Christmas, we'll ramp back up. And then we can, you know, we can bring, bring the business to us. That's why I think wholesale's a, gr- a great option. I think so too. Yeah. I'm trying to get more people, like especially chefs, to specialise in things. I think that's yeah. going to be the future. I think specialising in like we're doing charcuterie, terrines, parties, all the rest of it. And I think... Chefs that are good at making whatever bone broth or, you know, pasta or whatever it might be. I think that more people should get into that and do wholesale. I think it, I think the future's there, to be totally honest I think with you. so too, because people are seeking good produce, you Definitely. know, like actually seeking good produce. And, I'm, you know, we, we just convenience and whatever, but there are other ways around it, you know. It doesn't always have to be pasteurized. It doesn't always have to be processed. And it's just a natural way of doing it. And, Definitely. oh, you guys make beautiful products. So, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I really, I honestly genuinely think that, that the way that the, the, the food industry is going regarding hours, wages, all the rest of it, it's only going to be a matter of time where people go, you know what, we just can't afford, it. you know, the standard of the training, just due to the fact that they can't work the hours that, the, yeah. that they used to be at work, like 50 hours. If you could work 60 hours, and now you can only work 40. Well, you're going to learn slower. Do you know what I mean? And, and just the way the mentality, and I'm not knocking millennials or whatever you say by any means, but just the way that the, the, the world's changing technologically, people aren't that interested in that anymore. They're interested in, in eating the food and looking after themselves, but they're not that interested in actually making it and spending the time. They're, they're more interested in other things. The so convenience, I think yeah. Yeah, exactly. Convenience and the rest of it, for sure. And both parents have to work. You know, it's endless. But regarding restaurants, you know, with the hours and a lot of the restaurants at the moment are copping quite a lot of shit for over overworking the staff, which I don't believe a lot of it anyway, but um, an underpaying and all these kind of things. You need to pay your staff, but I think it's, yeah, it's like not... Yeah, what comes it's around not, goes around. It's not black and white, which everyone, you know, they're underpaying. I think it's a lot different than that, but I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. But um, yeah, I think it's only a matter of time where restaurants are going to start buying more stuff in. You know, like back in the day, it was... Um, Butchers, you know, restaurants used to always do all the butchery. You know, you'd buy sides in, that. buy pigs in, you'd break yeah. them down. Farmers wouldn't sell back back in the day. They're not going to sell joints. They'll just sell you the pig. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you've got to break it down. Then it went on that they'd sell you joints, and you'd have to break the joints down. Now you can just phone up the butcher and just get a, a three hundred gram Scotch fillet, and it would just arrive. Not one, but you know what I mean. It will yeah. arrive, and that's you know that's how it is. I think it's going to go personally more and more along that avenue with. Even stocks and sauces and pasta and things like that, they'll just buy it in because if chefs don't want to work the nights and all the rest of it, they'll start these independent businesses mm-hmm. and they'll start these businesses that are doing quality product yeah. produce, which the can the restaurant can't can produce as good, but not for the same price because they can buy in volume. Da, 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 da. So it's, I think it's just a natural progression. I think that's where we, that's where we're heading. So I would I, I would add, on a bit of a rant. I would you know try and. Um, support any chef to go and look at that option as opposed to a cafe if they don't want to, if they want to work more than nine or five it's worked really well for us to be honest I totally agree with that because you know even coming from a perspective where you know the restaurant owner's pr- pr- perspective hey you're getting the best of the best here you're getting product that is actually being cared for you know this person made this and they made sure that everything put in it was the best made in the best way possible and this pairs with this and why not like why not you you can't do it all for sure exactly you can't do it all exactly you can't exactly jeez so you've done well with the business like you you must be pretty proud of yourselves for sure and that it's it's been quite a quick two years is pretty quick you know it's it's a good ride (laughs) it's been really exciting i guess um doing this uh time flew by really quickly um we were in the we're in the middle of moving um and we've just Packed up at the old place. Oh, and, that's when? How long? Uh, this is a few days ago. Oh, bloody yeah. hell. So just, just packing up and just standing. Sad? A bit sad? Um, yeah, just a bit unsure. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A bit weird feeling. Yeah, I felt really weird when I, was, um, when I was locking up the door for the last time. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. But we've been here for two years. And yeah. now we're moving to a different site. But 
um yeah it's exciting it's exciting yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and time really flies like two years just went by so quickly and you you did a you you recently did like a um or oh, help me out here like a course do you remember was it a, was it a course ah uh, yeah the rocket cedar program rocket cedar yeah. program how did that work out oh my gosh so for any small businesses or startups wanting or in the food space wanting you know just a clear view or a little bit of help, um, direction in their business, and they f- they feel like they fit the category, vice versa. I highly recommend the Rocket Cedar program. Yeah. What what were your big takeaways from it? Honestly, looking at the business in a bird's eye view. So instead of being in the business, having forced to look after the business from the outside has been really good for us. Yeah. Um, our yeah. big takeaway was really. Planning um, for the yeah. business at the start of the program, um, when we got accepted to it, um, basically we were told that we needed to commit to a day, every Monday, for the next fourteen weeks. And in my head, I was thinking, oh, this business is gonna take a toll. It's gonna be hard on us because how are, how is it possible for us to take one day off on a weekly basis? Two of you as well. Two yeah. of us. Yeah, yeah. And which means that production stops and everything needs to. To get changed around um how are we gonna do it really it, it was going to be impossible but after starting the program we realized that everything was just helping us plan a lot better it gave us a clearer idea of what to do and how to do it um we now have um a better network of um mentors who can help us with like you know even the legal and and the new location just giving us ideas all the time it's no longer me and ivy sort of coming up with ideas we actually have a a panel of people to 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 discuss with and to actually learn from and when you say mentors i hear this getting thrown around mentors yeah i need a mentor and all the rest of it like when you say a panel is that like a a week like a monthly or is it like a phone call is it an email like you know because people you hear people say oh yeah i've got a mentor like a mentor really freaks me out like, is it like dad or like what's going yeah, on like, like am mm-hmm. i making friends with this person because like i just want something for it just feels a bit weird for me I, i'm not i'm not into it to be honest with you but what is it for you guys is it an email or uh, or, or a phone call or is it like a, a meetup or do they people come out what is it tell me so it's any form of communication really um so through the program um this whole program was done through startup vic yeah and obviously then they you know that startup vic funded rocket cedar and Rocket Cedar has its own panel. Right, So okay. we have access to the panel. Um, really awesome. For a period of time, a year, two years, or is it for life for, or whatever? For life, one would yeah. think. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, if you guys okay. are listening Yo, to this, there you go, no already, out. So we're going to hunt them down anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's been really great for us because it could be just a phone call. It could be, hey... You know, when we're looking for the site, we said, hey, you know, we're looking for a site, da-da-da, and we're going to go check this new place out. We think we found the perfect spot. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to come check it out? They come over and they're like, uh, yeah, no. Oh, really? Keep looking. We were devastated. Of course you were. Because I was so set on that we were side. Devastated. I, was, I was so sure that he was going to come and say, well, well done. done. Yeah. Well done, guys. <laughs> now you can take the, the business forward. He, he basically said, um, yeah, keep looking. And then we were kind of shocked. We went back. We thought about it. And then we realized that what he said was very spot on. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. That's great. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a mentor for us, or these mentors, they come with a vast of experience. Yeah. So these guys have worked with big companies. They yeah. consult big companies. And for guys like that to look at where we are right now, I suppose they're able to foresee where the future is. Yeah. Um, and for the guy that came over, you know, um, Ben, he came over and had a look and he said, no, move on you know not big keep, enough is that the problem yeah not big enough yeah, yeah. or if you pay just a little bit extra you know you get this much and yeah. you have to think about this and that not and move, you, you don't have to move again in four years yeah, time. yeah so yeah. it was it's having confidence as well it's having confidence in your own business as well to think definitely if i take this on like what happens if i don't get the orders da, 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 you know it's all, you know it's a lot easier to go well we'll just take this small step instead of taking yeah. this big L- jump let's chew it one yeah, bit yeah, at a time yeah, yeah exactly yeah for sure it's a but again a lot of that comes down to financials as well let's be yeah. totally honest with you like i'm going on my third mincer i know it's it's totally different but i'm going and people could say you should have just bought the you know the seven grand one straight up then you wouldn't have spent the 900 bucks and then the two grand and now you you know but it's like 
but if you don't have the seven grand, yeah. what the fuck yeah. am I going to do? Do you know and what I mean? And you need to get through what you need to get through. Exactly, you. exactly. Yeah. So it's not it's not always black and white as like, oh, well, we should get this massive place at the beginning. You know, it's, it's a gradual, it is a gradual process and it's a calculated risk, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's that's the thing. And it's nice to have someone that you can go to. We we have that a little bit with our accountant. You know, yep. we give him numbers and say, this is what we think about taking on another staff or this is what we think about this. And they run the numbers and then come back and say, look, you need to do this or we probably would wait on or do you know what I mean? So uh, it's you, not a mentor yeah, but, you know, it, and we it, pay him. I prefer well, to pay well, him. It is, it is kind of like yeah, a mentor is. but yeah. He's also a business guy, guy yeah. But yeah. I would find that, I think that is a super positive thing that you guys have got. It gives you a massive leg up I would say for sure. I would, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, because between yeah. the two of us we talk to ourselves and then we listen to the same um, podcasts and and, and and information and read the same books and stuff like that. So, when we agree on something, we agree on it and we yeah. just want to go head on with it. And yeah. then having someone from the outside to say, hey, this is a bit silly. Um, have you thought about this? And we're like, oh, hang on. Okay, good idea. It just makes us think in a different perspective. And that's important. Two things from that. What podcast do you listen to? Oh, a whole bunch. Um, so we listen to a lot of health ones. Um, yeah, so Stronger, yeah. uh, David Asprey, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. Joe Rogan, um, gosh, a whole bunch. Uh, yeah. Mamma Mia, um, that's okay. that's always a good one when I need a little bit of an estrogen fix. The, yeah. ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate Health podcast. Yeah. Well. Yep. Which one? Ultimate Health. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you ever listen to Dr. Rhonda Patrick on Joe Rogan? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. obviously yourself as well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rhonda Patrick is the business. I love, I love her. She's so good. Yeah, she was the one that talked about um, thyroid, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, inflammation. Yeah. All this kind of, yeah, exactly. And sprouting, like a lot of sprouting vegetables. Yeah. I love all that, you know, younger the vegetables, the the more nutrient dense it is. The more nutrient dense it is, yeah. So a lot of sprouts, uh, um, heat shot proteins and and cold shot proteins on the body. I do heat shot for like sports and whatnot. Like after a long run, oh gosh, it's, it's great for recovery for like sure. cold shock Jeez, cold shock, heat yeah. shock yeah yeah for sure it really works so wow. yeah I, I love all that yeah so yeah oh when you say about decisions when you make decisions what well, give us an example of a decision that you that you that you would come together like that and say oh all sorts to really move forward. um to move forward i guess for us it's it's kind of a lot of things because yeah, what do we, we want to do with the business like yeah what, day in day out um um at the moment it's all focused on um, the new site so yeah. we're like thinking of how to set up the new site, where we're going to place everything. Um, whether we hire some equipment, whether we lease buy, some equipment, yeah, whether we yeah. buy, you know, do we start off with something a little bit smaller first or we, do we, you know... Invest. Yeah, so yeah. all these things. Um, but for us, we find that we just have so many micro and nano so-called decision makings yeah. and meetings that it's, it's just a constant basis, really. Like, that's yeah. what happens when you live with your yeah, business you partner as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you but, talk about it a lot? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. 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 yeah, same. But it helps to schedule in a weekly meeting or every two days we actually sit down and have a formal meeting with our diaries um do you really yeah, yeah. fuck we're just so not like that it's but so we, we we're we've, forced to we just otherwise you end up fighting man yeah <laughs> we've, we've, we've also found that while we have these so-called meetings with um the diaries and so on it's actually really beneficial to have a meeting outside home to actually um go to a cafe sit down um, with our diaries and then just sort of discuss what we want to do with the yeah, business because true. that makes a lot of difference no I bet it does I bet it yeah. I, 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 it just freaks me out because uh, yeah I don't oper- like we, I'm not saying you're right we're right you're oh, wrong no one's or whatever. Right or wrong, yeah, yeah exactly like we're just completely like we just run into complete I think we're quite similar because you're both partners me and Becca mm. partners you know you've got a small business we've got a small business you you know it's, it's very similar in a lot yeah. of ways do you know what I mean like it's yeah. pretty wholesale you use a distributor we have a distributor but like one you know we do a lot of our distribution do you, do you guys do your own distribution not so much yeah, yeah. okay so we don't well, so it's, it's, it's but nonetheless it's still the same it's still similar isn't it well like we don't maybe yeah we don't I, I wouldn't I don't even have a diary don't have a diary. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't. I just remember the. I remember that you could, you know, whatever. Yep. I just look on. Do you keep it on your phone or well, anything? We, or, yeah. had, we had that Instagram conversation. Yep. I just remembered that, yep. that, that it would be in there. Like, oh, I've got this, which is like, but this, I, this is just like, you know, just. Yep, a journal. Like, oh, oh look like, at you, a city lighter journal. Yeah. That is so nice. Yeah, it's so really it's cool. Mainly, <laughs> but that's just like interviews and things, but not really like a diary. And I just, I don't know, I like it. 
if I was to sit down in a meeting, I don't know what's happening. I'd be like, mm, well, what was happening? It, it just trips me out a little bit. It's, I know it, it's just a bit weird. That's all. I don't, not yeah. weird, and I know it's right. It's probably right. Oh, but whoa, no, I don't think there's a right or wrong. But for yeah. us, I think it just. I'm. Yeah. I, I think that I. Are you academic? Remem- are you pretty am- academic? I'm. I'm okay. I I struggle to remember certain things, so I feel that writing it down will actually help me remember it a lot better. Yeah. And obviously, using the phone with the apps and everything. It sort of helps me remind re- remind me what I need to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe for us. I'm now. I'm just thinking about it, trying to break it down my head. The big difference for us is I run the kitchen and run the guys create the food. Do you think Beck runs? She has a diary. Fucking hell, she'd be screwed without a diary. You know. Yeah. She, I, I don't even. I, I don't even have emails. Like I, I never reply. No one emails me. No one would ever email me. I've got like. Oh, I'm gonna spam you. Se- I've got like 700 <laughs> emails unopened. Yeah. I don't, like I don't even. Do you know what I mean? So. I, I would I maybe reply to, I would ask Beck to reply to an email for me. I'm dyslexic as a motherfucker, so I can't spell barely spell my name. So like I <laughs> I am um, yeah, I don't operate in that way. Do you yep. know what I mean? So we so you both I guess are both on sales and both you know, you, you it's quite similar roles is what yeah. I'm saying. Mm. So where we don't Beck has her role, she looks after that, I have my role, I look after that. I'll chip in and give her it's what I think and she'll maybe say to me, We should maybe do this, you know, and, and that's kinda of, so it's a lot I guess it is a lot different actually in, in that aspect. Yeah, and I think it's just a for for the two of us, it's just a better understanding yeah. of who needs to do what. Do you have I, your own roles? Do you have your own roles? Kind of. Yeah, I I don't know. We. I guess Andrew kind of hand, Andrew kind of handles more the production and logistics sides of it. Yeah. Um. Uh. And then I kind of handle everything else. Um, yeah. So it's it's we do cross over quite a lot. Yeah. But that's the general thing though isn't it yeah. like Adrian's been amazing packing down the shop like the old retail space was just boom 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 it was yeah. just him mainly yeah yeah okay. so I yeah. call, I'm, like, I'm the donkey I say I'm the uh, donkey, the donkey. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, like, that's what, I'm not saying you are I say I'm the donkey you know just get the donkey to move it that's what I you know that's, that's yeah I just spent a few days um, <laughs> exactly. with the with the with the masking tape and tape yeah and make it. friends with the boxes yeah. well listen I, I'm going to wrap this up soon yep. I just want to so if people do want to get your stuff where can they get it um, well, we're available in Victoria, yep. um, available in WA yep. and also New South Wales. Um, the best bet is to log on to www.thegoodseedcafe.com.au yep. and then there is a finder section, you key in your postcode and you can find um, the best retailers on it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're kind of scattered all over at the moment. So. Farmers markets. Farmers markets, of course. Um, every weekend. Every weekend. Um, every Saturday, definitely. Uh, Sundays, you can find us on the first Sunday at Flemington, the last Sunday at Altham. Otherwise, on Instagram, we generally post up and do reminders of where we are on the weekends. So. And Instagram, what's your Instagram? The Good Seed Cafe. Yeah. Facebook, same. The yep, same. same Everything yeah. the same. It's beautiful. You see loads. Of, uh, it's it's a great Instagram feed, to be fair. I love oh, it. thank you. Yeah, it's always, it's always stuff popping up. Well, thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, yeah, good luck for the with with the well with the new the new premises, and I hope it all goes well. And yeah. maybe we get a forklift at some point, and won't have to lift them jars. Oh, Joyce! Yeah, <laughs> we we'll have to have you come visit one day. Yeah, we, I would. We would love to. I would love to see that whole process for sure. Yeah, definitely. Be okay, fun. have a good night. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please tell a friend or give us a rating or a review on your podcast app. It all helps to get more listeners. Thanks. Until next week, have a good one.